Welcome back guys, I've once again curated the latest AI news and research in the past week. For starters, this is probably the most sci-fi movie based AI research concept I've ever seen. Seeing the world through your eyes is a nerf research that reconstructs a scene from someone's eye reflection or basically what they were seeing at that time. It was done by imaging their eyes while they move and collecting multiple reflections in their eyes. Then the AI uses those eye reflections to reconstruct a 3D scene beyond the camera's line of sight. This really sounds like those crime movies where they somehow get information out of people's eye reflection. Uh, uh, does Elon Musk challenging Zuck to a cage fight counts as an AI news? So out of nowhere, Elon challenged Zuck to a cage fight and then Zuck replied on Instagram he's down for it and for him to choose a location and now Elon replied Vegas Octagon? I mean, that would be interesting. Meta released a text-to-speech AI called Voicebox and with this editing function probably being the coolest. Sammy and Penelope's heartwarming friendship inspires joy. Sammy and Penelope's heartwarming friendship inspires joy. It's like an AI eraser for audio. No, GPT-4 can't ace MIT. A recent work claimed that GPT-4 can score 100% on MIT's EECS curriculum with the right prompting. However, this critical analysis written by three MIT EECS seniors debunked the paper and showed that it's BS, with holes in their research methods and flaws in their dataset. There are no sanity checks, they lack rigorousness, and foremost, the test question is not even an accurate representation of the MIT curricula. How papers are now Cutting corners to get the desired results in order to make shocking titles come true is a new low in scientific studies. As the blog says, this paper speaks to the larger trend in AI recently and while the field progresses faster and faster, the timeline for discovery seems to shrink, which often comes with shortcuts. One very worrying trend is the technique of evaluating a model's accuracy using a language-based model like GPT-4, and memes were even made from this. On the topic of evaluation, lemma less is more for alignment a paper which shows that numerical result of a language model does not reflect the performance of the model in reality. This paper also shows that most of the abilities of the language models are acquired in the pre-training stage, so giant models that has like 65 billion parameters contains extremely high abilities that can be unlocked by a very small number of examples. This kind of raises the questions on how loss calculations and numerical evaluations really work on language generation tasks. But great news on the other hand, OpenLama 13b was released and it has similar capabilities as Llama 13b published by Meta, and since it's under Apache 2.0, it is free for commercial use. And there is Google that announced their new Tryon AI, Tryon Diffusion. They actually marketed this pretty heavily, it even has its own promotional video on this AI research with a few blogs alongside too. But this Tryon AI is not really a new concept, it has existed for quite a while. However, I think their results are probably by far the best. They are also very confident about how consistent the clothes transfer onto all kinds of body shapes and body types too. Well, on the other hand, it's kind of hard to see the clothes remain consistent on the bodies, like certain clothing patterns or length being actually precise. But this does have the potential to create more opportunities for impulse purchases, like ayo I look good in that, which replaces the thought of hmm, how will I look in it. That thought is mostly why people hesitate or don't buy clothes online. Time to design by cloud merch, I guess. New Wigs stands for Neural Dynamic Model for Volumetric Hair Capture and Animation. The Blender or the Unity people will probably be like, we can do this 10 years ago already. But hear me out, I think the key takeaway here is that the hairs are completely generated, not a 3D model, but 3D latent hair states that contains its motions and appearances. So it can create hair animations without having to rely on hair observations as a driving signal, and it relies on facial landmarks and gravity directions to generate the realistic motions instead. The hair looks pretty realistic, however, it was a achieved with volumetric rendering like what nerfs use, so in some cases you can see that weird ghostly textures at the tip of the hair, but it's like a trade-off between rendering all the individual hair to rendering a whole chunk of realistic hair that uses AI learned volumetric rendered motions. There's this anonymous paper on video to video translation called re-render a video, it's like the image to image video I often talk about. They propose a new structure called hierarchical cross-frame constraints, where it involves cross-frame attention, color aware adaptive latent adjustment, shape aware cross-frame latent fusion, pixel-aware cross-frame latent fusion, and frame propagation. All these fancy words do actually make the results look way fancier though. Like this Ghibli style man looks especially on point. I'm guessing this research is focusing on anime style video transfer because those anime and AI portraits results just look so much better. Codes would be available soon too. Someone asked ChatGPT for Windows activation keys and the keys actually work. They patched it pretty quickly though. And it also worked on Google Bard which is hilarious. Adobe has implemented Fire 
Firefly into Illustrator. With Firefly in it, you can make it fill, pick, or generate variations for your designs. This looks incredible for speeding up workflows and testing out ideas. This guy removes real life ads with segment anything. I can definitely see this in jailbreak version of the Apple Vision Pro 20 years from now. Oh yeah, there are also ChatGPT leaks about the upcoming feature where you can have workspaces or even file uploads for reading PDFs without using plugins. But since it's just a leak, we should just take it with a grain of salt. Language to Rewards for Robotic Skill Synthesis is a research paper on using LLM for robot motions. The major difference is that this doesn't use low-level instructions or motion descriptions, but instead a kind of reward code that operates the robots. This research was able to achieve 90% of its goals, which outperforms the baseline, which is like 50%. There's a new LoRa research called Glora or GLoRa, and it performs much better compared to other optimization adapter techniques. It demonstrated stronger transfer learning, few shot learning, and domain generalization abilities too. Have you ever tried to learn drawing, but always have difficulties finding out what went wrong when you look at what you drew and dream of being guided while drawing? This new research called Annie Face Drawing actually converts rough sketches into anime portraits during the sketching process. Well, it's mainly for assisting users in the creation of anime portraits, and I don't think the codes are available, but it's still an interesting concept. It uses Stalgen 2, not the Fusion, which kind of makes sense since it's interactive, so it has to be in real time and fast. Remember the paper Track Anything Everywhere All At Once, which I mentioned last week? This week, DeepMind also released their tracking research called TAPIR. Tapire? I guess they really panicked and pushed their research just in case it doesn't go obsolete. But it does look really good. This research is about 3D imagery construction from an image and dedicated to construct 3D models of dogs, and it's called Byte. This footage you are seeing right now is not real. It's a generated dash cam footage of the real world, and if it's small enough, you probably can't tell it's fake. Gaia 1 is a research that can generate video footage that captures vehicle behaviors and scene features, which makes it ideal for research and training autonomous car systems in the future. This research called Vit to Avatar can convert a person in a video into a 3D model. Compared to prior research, the extracted human 3D models have high temporal consistency and clear details. It works on videos that it was not trained on, and it's so smooth. There's like no flickering at all. There are tons of use cases for this, and the codes are available, so you can try it out right now. People have gotten even more creative with QR codes art. This person combined QR code and control net tiling together and made the QR code a part of a larger image. The QR code works, I just had to lower its brightness. This person improved the PS1 graphics with stable diffusion, and some results are pretty satisfying to look at. This guy made an incredible video to video that was composed from a variety of different and coherent 3D objects. Let's end today's video with Stefan Wolfframe looking at cats with party hats. Yes, the guy that made the mathematical calculator called Wolfframe Alpha. And yeah, let me know what you think about today's episode down in the comments. Shout out to Andrew Luscellius, Alex J, Chris Ledoux, Alex Mariz, Deacon, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.